you look in the word index to the Dhammapada, you find that two words that are used most often are the fool and the wise person. It's a basic distinction. The wise person is the person who realizes that the mind needs to be trained. Otherwise, there's no true happiness. The fool doesn't see the importance of that. And so it just kind of keeps on doing things the way he or she has been doing them all along. And so the basic challenge of the text, in fact, the basic challenge of the, all the Buddhist teachings are which of those two people are you going to be? And it's a pretty rigorous training that the Buddha is, is offering here for the mind. In the West here, we like to think, well, maybe it's something we can squeeze into our spare time or squeeze into our vacations. But that's not what the Buddha said at all. He says, if you really want to get the most out of it, it has to be a total commitment. And it's a training in all parts of life. What you do, what you say, what you think. And he starts out with the five precepts. Those are just very general and very basic. It's kind of like the lowest common denominator, and then he builds on top of that to higher and higher levels of refinement. You look at the rules for the monks, and the basic code has 227 rules, but then the Vinaya as a whole has lots more than that. In fact, I don't think anybody has ever sat down to count them all. There's so many. And some of them deal with very minor, minor things. And you wonder, how could such a broad-minded, enlightened person like the Buddha get in caught up on the details. Well, it's because of the details that we create suffering for ourselves. It's the little things that we tend to overlook. Those are the things that are causing us problems. Every little movement of the mind is either skillful or unskillful. And so we have to watch for them. can't just say, well, it doesn't really matter. Because it does matter. Unskillful thoughts hide unskillful intentions. And where do these unskillful intentions come from? Have you ever looked into them? Because sometimes they come from some very basic flaws in our character. So we've got to watch out. We have to be very careful. I mean, the Buddha's final words were, don't be complacent. Remember, he found the Dharma out in the wilderness. And many times out in the wilderness, the The deciding factor between life and death is oftentimes very little things. Being careless in little tiny ways can sometimes lead to your death. And so you have to be vigilant, you have to be alert, you have to be heedful of the consequences and the implications of your actions. So when you're practicing meditation, it's a good way of looking very directly at the mind and the little movements of the mind. Those are the things that keep the mind from settling down. Why are you so infatuated with the movements of your mind? These little worlds that you create for yourself. What the Buddha called becoming. And we see it both on the, the micro level and on the macro level. The micro level, these little thought worlds we create. We move off into this, move off into that. And we're just fascinated with our own creations. It's like story, that story Jean Piaget told about his daughter. She went through a period when she was very young that every time she had a bowel movement, she couldn't flush the toilet until she had made up a story about each little piece floating there in the toilet. That's not just a little kid's thing. That's the way most of us are. We have this little creation in the mind we have to feed on and have to look into and have to get involved before we're willing to let it go, and then move on to another one, then another one. And sometimes it's just the slightest stirring in the mind that creates these things. And they lead on, to, lead on to the macro level, one life after another after another, these worlds that we experience from one birth to the next to the next. They come out of these little movements of the mind, so you can't be careless. What direction is your mind heading in? Where is it going? So this is one of the purposes of meditation, getting the mind to settle down, be still, so you can see these movements. 
even the slightest ones. And look into the parts of the mind that you don't like to look, to look into. Where is the dishonesty in your own mind? Or the games that the mind plays with itself? Often we would look everywhere but there, but those are the places that are causing us suffering. We have to turn around and look directly at them. Because when the mind moves from one little world to the next, oftentimes it, it's like when you go to a theater. And they're going to change the scenery from one scene to the next, so they've got to close the curtains, because otherwise if you see the people up on the stage moving the scenery around, it just totally destroys the illusion. So the mind has this habit of closing the curtain on itself. In that process of closing the curtain, all kinds of things can, and faster, all kinds of things can grow. All these unskillful habits that we have, that's where they like to hide out. So don't be careless about the mind slipping away. As soon as you catch it slipping away, bring it back. Catch it slipping away, bring it right back again. You've got to be rigorous with the mind. You can't just say, well, it doesn't matter. I'll explore this little side track before I get back to the meditation. It's, it's, it's that habit that you've got to overcome. Just keep coming back, coming back, coming back to the work that has to be done, because it really does have to be done. I mean, we're dealing with, as Zen people say, we're dealing with a great matter, life and death. It's all being decided right here in the movements of your mind right now. And it shows itself in other little careless ways that we talk and act and other ways that show our intentions, because many times our intentions are not straight. And nobody can deal with those deviant intentions or defective intentions but ourselves. If we're not willing to train ourselves in that way, we're not going to let anybody else train ourselves, that's for sure. We're not willing to take criticism, not willing to have these things pointed out. It makes it impossible to make any practice, any progress in the practice. So you've got to be careful about the little things. Beginning right now, as you meditate, with the little movements of the mind. Try to be as alert to what's going on as you can be. As soon as you detect even the slightest sense of that the mind is going to leave the breath. Ask yourself, where are you going? What do you want? What do you think you're going to get out of those movements? Haven't you been there before? Come back to the breath. And then try to make the breath as absorbing as possible. The more sensitive you can be to the breath, the more you find that all these hardnesses that we've developed within ourselves, these rigid ideas we have about, well, this has to be that way and that has to be this way, and all the things that hide behind those attitudes, and then they begin to loosen up a bit. And you can start seeing these things. Many times they're things you don't particularly care to see, but if you're not willing to look at them and deal with them, they're just going to stay there. Things never change unless you're willing to make the change. We all like the idea that this someday enlightenment will hit us. But it's not going to come unless we do the groundwork, unless we clear things out. We've got to practice the Dharma in line with the Dharma. This is a theme that Ajahn Sawat hammered at over and over again. And as I said, this is one of Ajahn Mun's favorite themes. You can't practice the Dharma in line with your own likes, or sort of pick and choose that you'd prefer this over that. Because what that happens is that you're just following your likes and you avoid all the real work that needs to be done. And just live in these fantasy worlds that never get questioned. There's no practice there. It just sort of hangs around in the same old place, goes nowhere at all, just spins around and around and around. And the question is, have you had enough? 
you've had a sense of enough of that stuff, you want to find a way out, that's the beginning of your practice. Until that point, it hasn't begun.